Story 1. For those of you new to reading my stories, I ask that you reserve judgment on why I did all this until after you know what my mother put me through. She blatantly favored my sister to the point of letting her get away with anything she did to me unless my father got involved. She assaulted me as hard as she could, to the point where I couldn't even sit down for no reason on several occasions. She would snap her fingers and order me around like a dog, let my sister steal money I earned from doing chores and odd jobs around the area, and took her on shopping sprees with said money. She tried to send me to military school behind my father's back when I refused to let her beat me anymore and more recently tried to force me to give the house I inherited from my now-deceased father to my pregnant sister. To start, my mother has several irrational fears we never could explain. She hates and actively avoids things like garden gnomes and clowns, but especially the gnomes for some reason. If she were a vampire, they'd be a silver cross covered in garlic to her. She's also pretty superstitious. At this time, Dad was staying in a motel because he outed Mom as a cheater and then filed for divorce. My mother was not taking it well because he was also blackmailing her with a few forms of fraud she'd committed in his name. Her mental health was shaky enough that it was easy to mess with her. My first choice of weapon was to find some garden gnomes. I hit Paydirt at a nearby garage sale, a couple of streets overrun by an elderly couple. They were retiring to Florida and selling just about everything. The lady liked gnomes, and she had a whole bunch from big to small. I bought all of them super cheap. Heck, they were nearly free when I explained what I was going to do with them. My first act was to put the bigger gnomes in the yards of neighbors on either side and in front of our house. And yes, I did get their permission to put them there. They did and still do hate my mother. She threatened multiple neighbors with homeowners association violations, even though there hasn't been a homeowners association on the street since the early 90s. She even wanted to re-establish the Homeowners Association in 1999. But no one, not even my father, signed her petitions. So, needless to say, I found it easy to find volunteers for my cause. She saw the gnomes in the morning when getting ready to leave for work. I was watching from my bedroom window, and she looked noticeably uncomfortable as I'd aimed them to all stare right at her when standing by her car. The next place I targeted was my mom's work. I was acquainted with a coworker of hers that absolutely despises my mother. Let's call this person Wendy. I talked to Wendy the previous day about my mom's known paranoia. Well, suddenly Wendy's desk and several others in the building were adorned with tiny gnomes that all were pointed to stare at my mom's workstation. Wendy even got a little gnome puppet to make jokes with in the office. Over the next few days, I went outside in the middle of the night and moved the gnomes in the neighbor's yards a bit closer each night. I had a few with angry faces painted on them that I mixed in, and they were holding pitchforks. Eventually, I placed several of them to look like they were rallying toward my mom's car. That made her start parking on the street to avoid looking at them. So, I put one of the angry ones in the neighbor's backyard in such a way that its head was poking over the fence in view of the window in the master bedroom. I heard her freak out in the morning from seeing it, and then she knocked it down with a rake. For a different prank, I got two random guys from my high school to carry a large mirror outside of my mom's work like they were moving it. I got the mirror at a garage sale too, and I paid the guys ten bucks each to intentionally bump into my mother in a way that'd make her look like she was at fault the moment she exited the building. One of them said, Oh no, lady, that's seven years of bad luck. I watched from around a corner, and the color drained from her face. It was priceless. I knew when she was coming out because Wendy called me on my cell the moment she was leaving the office, and I gave the two guys the signal to start moving. My mother ended up screaming at them and yelling at them, so they just booked it and were gone in a flash. I hopped on my bike and beat her home by cutting through a back road. Thank you, bicycle engine. Next, there was a little person in town that worked part-time as part of a clown group for children's parties. I called his number from an ad and asked if he would do something for me best $40 I'd spent in a long time. My mom just came home from work after the broken mirror incident, and as she was getting out of her car, there was a little man in a gnome costume riding a child's tricycle down the street and waving to her with a menacing grin. I tipped the guy an extra five bucks for that performance. My mother ran into the house in a complete panic and actually called the police because there were gnomes out to get her. The police ended up doing a wellness check on her. Before long, my mother was complaining to the neighbors about the gnomes and threatening to call the homeowners association. But they all just reminded her there hadn't been a homeowners association in years, and there was no law against having the gnomes. Mom did not like that and went full Karen crazy. 
She took a claw hammer from Dad's tools and started destroying one of the gnomes with it. But the neighbor stopped her by threatening to call the police. Someone mentioned aloud that she shouldn't have hit the gnome because now they were really mad. That night I took a whole bunch of the gnomes and set them up outside of the front door to look like an angry mob. In front of the pack, I placed the gnome she'd attacked. Half its face was gone, and I had to super glue part of its head back together. But it looked mean. For good measure, I added a few spiders that were some old Halloween decorations from a neighbor in with the gnomes. They looked realistic enough to be creepy at first glance. I also added a plastic smurf I found just to be funny. The resulting morning freakout was glorious. Mom refused to leave the house and wanted to call the cops again. I talked her down and said it was probably just a cruel prank by the neighbors. Then I moved all the gnomes and spiders out of the yard so she'd leave and go to work. She's a terrible driver when she's in a bad mood. So she sped off the moment she left the driveway. There was a cop just down at the end of the street that pulled her over and ticketed her for speeding in a residential area. Apparently, he'd gotten an anonymous tip the previous day about a reckless driver from a payphone to wait down at the end of that particular street in the early morning. Huh, I wonder who did that. I stopped moving the big gnomes around and just left them poised in the neighbor's yards until I moved out to live with my dad. One of the neighbors I kept in contact with said the gnomes were all still there for years. It became a running gag in the neighborhood that keeping gnomes in your yard would keep my mother away. So a whole bunch of the neighbors got in on it and put them everywhere. Last I drove through the neighborhood over two months ago, there were still a good few of them around. I even put a few gnomes in my front yard after my mother broke several of my windows by throwing rocks at my house. The pranks didn't end here either. I had a few more in store. But that's for another time. Story 2 I've encountered a few entitled parents before, but nothing like an entitled military spouse I keep hearing horror stories about. Well, I finally encountered one. I was in the middle of my lunch at the food court at the Exchange Think Walmart on a military base. On base after buying some stuff when some random kid approached me. He looked to be about six, seven years old. Hey, can I see your airsoft gun? He asked, pointing at the cheap Crosman air rifle I had beside me. Huh? Ooh, sure, I said, setting it on the table beside my tray. He looked at it for a few seconds. Wow, can I have it? Ooh, sorry, but no, this is mine. I put it away immediately. He started stomping around. But I want it. Sorry, but I said no. It's not a toy. Besides, I don't think you're old enough to own one. He left after wailing around for a minute or so. Shortly after, two Air Force Base police officers arrived at the food court to have lunch. They got food from Panda Express and sat at a table in the middle of the food court, about two tables in front of me. Another few minutes passed, and I finished my lunch. I got up to throw my trash away. As soon as I got back to my table to pick up my stuff and leave, it happened. A wild Karen approached with the entitled kid in tow behind her. She looked exactly how military wives were described in the stories, grossly overweight, with her kid in tow, and the may I speak to your manager hairstyle. Can I help you? I asked. That's him, the entitled kid cried. Upon seeing the kid in tow behind the mother, I knew it wasn't going to be good, so I rolled my eyes and sighed on instinct. My son wants your airsoft gun. Can you give it to him? The entitled mother demanded. As I told your son earlier, no, this is mine. You're so selfish, you don't even need it. And I paid for it. It's mine. If he really wants one, you can buy him one. They still have a few more inside. No, I checked, and they don't have any more of that. Give it to him now. No, I'm not in the mood for this. I'm out of here. I tried to walk out the door towards the two base police officers to get out of there, but the entitled mother got in front of me and tried to snatch the box my airsoft rifle was in. I instinctively yanked the box towards me and kicked her in the gut simultaneously, which sent her flying about five feet back. I maintained grip on the box. By the way, as soon as she hit the ground, she shrieked. The entitled kid started crying even harder, and the two base police officers who saw everything got up and ran towards us. What is going on here? The first base police officer asked in a loud, booming voice. He assaulted me, the entitled mother shrieked. She tried to steal my airsoft rifle. It was in self-defense, I explained. Liar! You stole my son's airsoft rifle. I was just trying to get it back, she yelled. The second base police officer helped the mother up, 
but also kept her back. Sir, is this true? The first officer asked me. Of course not. She's lying, and I can prove it, I replied. The first base police officer approached me as I pulled out the receipt from the plastic bag that had the rest of my stuff. I then took out the debit card I used to pay for my stuff as well as my military ID and handed them all to the officer. He looked at my receipt, saw my name on the receipt, looked at both my debit card and military ID, and handed them back to me. I put the receipt back in the plastic bag and my debit card and military ID back in my wallet. Yep, this receipt has the correct name on it, the first base police officer confirmed. Thank you, I said. I apologize for having to deal with this. Have a good rest of your day, he said. It's okay. You have a good rest of your day as well, I replied. The first base police officer told the second officer to turn the entitled mother around. Once she was facing the other way, the first officer took out his cuffs to get ready to cuff her. Then he told the second officer to start giving her verbal commands so they could cuff her. As soon as the entitled mother realized she was being detained, she started flailing around and screaming, You can't do this to me. My husband is a captain. I will have you both in trouble. You hear me. Ma'am, we saw everything that happened between you and this gentleman, the first officer responded. Once they had her in cuffs, they took her and the entitled kid away to wherever they needed to go. I left immediately after that only to come back an hour later, since the rifle case I bought for a separate rifle was a tad too small, and the airsoft rifle was not what I was expecting after doing a few test shots at home. Story 3 Every time my mom and I go shopping for shoes, she gets mistaken for an employee. Most big chains don't have any uniforms that have to be worn, and employees instead wear one of those little name tags or IDs around their neck. What gets her mistaken for an employee seems to be that she's not rude. She actually puts the boxes back when the shoes don't fit her. The other day, for example, we were shopping and I was trying on shoes. When I went to return to my mom a couple of aisles down the store, she was suddenly gone. Where could she be? Well, it turns out that she was on the other side of the store, chatting to a nice guy as he was asking her about shoes. She, having worked in retail and knowing a bunch about shoes, helped him around. I followed the two for about three minutes while she helped him pick out shoes, then helped him judge whether they fit. The guy didn't find what he was looking for, but thanked her and told her the service was amazing. She replied, oh, I don't work here. I was just putting these boxes back where I got them from. The guy was so sorry, but then proceeded to tell her that even though she didn't work there, she should. It was the best service he'd ever received. Mom then continued to give him tips on where he could find good shoes that might fit him, pointing him to other stores. When I approached her and asked, what was that? She just said, I was advising a customer, duh. This happens frequently, and we always get a good laugh out of it.